Father, we come before you, and we are so very thankful for your word, for its life itself. Lord, it is that which breathes life into our soul, the hope, the glorious hope of salvation that we have come to know only through the way of your word. And Father, I pray that your word, I know, is all power, but I pray that God, even today, your word will speak to us. Lord, that you will enlighten our minds and our spirit will, uh, man, will grow and we will be strengthened and built up and brought to a better place, a deeper place in our relationship with you. And may it be that uh, we don't just come for the purpose of, of habit or duty, but that we come to your presence always because we want to join ourselves in fellowship with you. Bless then this message today to my heart and to the heart of all those who would be gathered here together. And we'll give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. In 1 Timothy 4, verse 7, there's a very short verse, but a very powerful one. It says, exercise yourself towards godliness. Exercise yourself towards godliness. 1 Timothy 4, 7. Now I'm going to meet you here at Matthew. You're a very familiar passage. Matthew 6, beginning to read here at verse 5. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. But assuredly, I say to you, that they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows the things that you have need of before you ask. And in this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. And your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory forever. Somebody say amen. Amen. I want to speak to you today about developing the discipline of daily prayer. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to be sincere in my practice of my faith. And I have to believe that you do so also. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I won't say it. And you do so also. Amen. You see, being sincere in our faith is not something that you feel. Today, feelings are so elevated in the context of our culture. But being sincere is something you do, not something that you feel. You may feel sincere, but God calls us to be sincere. In the Christian faith, there are disciplines that God calls us to develop so that we can mature in our faith. And I want to become better at and more faithful to those disciplines. How about you? Amen. And I want to do that because I want to evidence a more sincere faith in my life. And, and today we're focusing on the discipline 
of daily prayer. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say that I'm, I'm going to be working on my daily prayer today. I hope you're going to do that. 1 Timothy 4 verse 7 says this. It says, exercise yourself towards godliness. In that original, that word exercise actually is the word gymnasia. From which we get the word gymnastics. You say, what does that have to do? You know, God wants us to have holy gymnastics? No. God's saying that we should exercise ourselves. You see, the word gymnastics is the art of exercising by way of training. That is, by teaching and practice and discipline. How many of you think that sounds fun? Mm. No? <laughs> How many of you know that there's great benefits when you and I discipline ourselves Amen. towards a better prayer life? Amen. You see, that's what God calls us to. He, he's at work. How many of you know that God is at work in every believer's life? Amen. You see, Godliness is God's purpose for every believer. But the exercise of spiritual disciplines is the primary means by which God desires us to move toward His purpose in our life. And today, that's what we want to do. We want to move forward in our relationship with God by learning how to pray more effectively. Now, Jesus' disciples had the same thought. They said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. And prayer is a, an incredible opportunity that is always available to us. But an opportunity that often we do not take advantage of. Now, if you read the Gospels, you'll notice that Jesus made prayer a foremost priority in his life. And Jesus' teaching reveals seven attributes of genuine and powerful prayer that can help you and help me evaluate our own prayer life. The first one is this. Are my prayers sincere? Have you ever asked that of yourself? Are my prayers sincere? Listen in verse 5. Jesus said, don't pray like hip hypocrites who pray that they might be seen by men. A hypocrite is someone who feigns himself to be someone that they are not. They love to stand before others and pray in a manner that might impress others and lead them to believe that they're kind of special and spiritual. But that kind of prayer only produces a false pride and a deaf ear from God because God is not interested in how ornate or how ritualistic your prayer is. God covets a prayer of the humble and earnest and compassionate. Oh, a prayer that is passion-filled is an effective prayer. Listen to James 5, 16. It says, the effective and fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much with God. Some of the greatest prayer, prayers I have ever heard have been people who have just recently got saved. And they don't know how to pray. And they bumble their way through. But there is no more sincere and, and prayer from the heart than a person who does that. And I want to tell you, that's the most powerful of prayers. Because they're not, they know they're going to sound silly. They know they're not going to have all the right words. But you know what? There's such a passion for, in their heart to pray that they pray. And they, they feel a little embarrassed that they don't know how to pray. But I want to tell you, that's the prayer that is a prayer of power. That's the prayer that gets all the God's ear. Because it's not about whether we're impressing people. It's about the heart. And God knows your heart. And when you pray for the heart, I want to tell the whole of heaven shakes Amen. when you pray. God calls us. He says, is your prayer sincere? 
He says, when you pray, go into your room, shut your door, pray in secret, and your Father will reward you openly. I want to tell you that if your public prayer exceeds your private prayer, then you're feigning yourself to be someone that you're not. The substance of our prayer life is found in our private prayer with God. When we go into the, that room alone and we shut the door and we pray from our heart in secret, and the secret place of prayer, the secret of prayer is to pray in secret. Did you catch that? The secret of prayer is to pray in secret. No one closes the door and gets on his knees and fakes it. You don't, you don't go in just by yourself, go behind the doors and pray, pray. You're there to meet with God. You come for that purpose. And you fully expect and you will see God meet you in that place of prayer. And the litmus test for your sincerity when you pray is what is happening in that private place. With only you and God. And everything you do in your spiritual life is measured by what happens in that private place of prayer. Let me say it to you again because you've got to hear that. You've got to hear this. Everything you do in your spiritual life is measured by what happens in that private place of prayer between you and God. It is the power of your life. So you say amen. amen. Number two, are my prayers an outpouring of my heart or just some outpouring of my mouth? Look at verse 7. When you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. You see, the ungodly think that if they, they, you know, share a multitude of words that when they pray, they have a better chance to see God answer. How do you know that God heard it the first time? <laughs> we don't have to ask over and over and over. For God is faithful. That doesn't mean that you and I shouldn't pray about issues in our life over and over. What I'm saying is, if you're sitting down with God and you're just you know, going through the motions of saying the same things over and over, then your heart is not involved. It's just an outpouring of your mouth. In 1 Kings, we say, they call on Baal from morning to noon, saying, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal, hear us. See, Elijah had brought the people of God to a point where they had to make a decision. They, he brought them to the point, who will you serve this day? And the whole nation of Israel came, and there were some that were... Uh, Worshipping false gods and some that were worshipping the God of Israel. And he said, well, we'll put this thing to a test. And so he, he had a, an offering that the uh, heathens could lift up unto the God that is not a God. And they prayed all day. And they cut themselves. And they prayed over. And they were repetitious. And they called and called and called on the God who is no God. But Elijah said, if you are God, then show yourself. And fire came from heaven. You see, friend, I will tell you that God wants us to have a prayer life that is sincere. Not just an outpouring of our mouth. But it's an unburdening of our heart to God so that we can be reminded that He knows and we can exercise faith in Him. Philippians 4 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Are my prayers sincere? Are my prayers an outpouring of my heart or just an outpouring of my mouth? Are my prayers reverential? And magnify. Look at verse 9. In this manner pray. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Now that word hallow means to have great reverence. And respect. For our heavenly Father. And God's names reveal who he is. They reveal his character. And his ways towards us. 
which lead our soul to magnify Him. And I want to share with you eight names that can amplify. I'm talking, bring you to another level in your, in your prayer life. The first one is the Lord our righteousness. And I gave you a verse there. You can read it on your own time. Hope you go back and take this and use this as a pattern and help to be encouraged as you pray. You see, when we can be strongly encouraged in our prayer life when we remind ourselves who the Lord is. You know, how many times do you find yourself being discouraged and you, you feel like you're, you're stumbling and you're failing and you're falling and you feel so ashamed at your inability, it seems, to do what you know is right and the bad choices you make and the things that you do that cause you to shy away. See, the enemy's always going to come in. He's always going to put up a... a Condemnation in your faults. That when you fail and fall short and you come into the place of prayer, He's always going to cause you to think, well, how can you come and who are you? Look at what you've done or failed to do. You're a hypocrite. My friend, I want to tell you, there are points in our lives where all of us are hypocrites. There are points in every day that we live that we fall short. How do you know that's so? Amen. God calls us to come into bold, in boldness to come before Him, confessing our sin, asking for forgiveness, and not allowing that lingering sense of failure and unworthiness to cause us to turn away, or that we are not qualified or worthy to come before Him when we pray. For God calls us to pray. He has brought us into a right relationship with Him. And our qualification comes before a holy God. His righteousness, Christ's righteousness upon my life and upon your life. That is what causes us to be able to come boldly into the presence of an almighty God and lift up our voice and confess our sins and move forward boldly and pray with confidence that God can hear us. So he's saying after that. Amen. He's our sanctifier. Listen, Philippians 1, 6, be confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad that God has given up on us? Aren't you glad that he gives you a second chance and a third chance? Amen. That's the kind of God he is. He's merciful. He's gracious. And he, he's here. He's your sanctifier. And you and I are not. The Lord Jesus Christ is our sanctifier. And we stand righteous in him. The Lord who is with us. Listen, you see, the ever-present Lord who is with me stooped down. He stoops down. Imagine. God stoops down from heaven to meet with you. Mm -hmm. And to meet with me. Mm -hmm. I can't get my mind mm -hmm. I, I just can't. Why would an almighty God have you, have you taken, a, taken a look at the uh, night sky lately? You know, I, I was uh, watching a program it was a uh, thing on Alaska and, and uh, they were out in the middle of the night. You know, it was bush country. And so, you know, they were, and all of a sudden they just took the camera and they, they put it up to the sky. My God. What glory. What power. What majesty. What wonder. That God who created all that you and I, so we can't even get our mind around it. He comes down into our closet and meets with us. Oh, what a privilege. What a, what a blessing. The Lord who is with us, the ever-present Lord. The Lord our peace. Some of you may 
may be in a difficult place today. You may feel overwhelmed. Your mind may be in turmoil. and You're anxious and you're fearful and you're wondering what tomorrow may bring. I want to tell you that all you need to do is go into your room and shut the door and get on your knees and pray, Father, you are the Lord of my peace. For now, I want to tell you, you can have God's peace every day. Your fear, your anxiousness, for God's peace. God will take on those problems. He is your Lord who is with you. He is your peace. He is your sanctifier. He is your righteousness. The Lord our healer. How have you been sick? God, you know, wow, we got a lot of healthy folk here. You've all been sick at some point or another. Some of us in some real bad ways. Job was sick. Paul was sick. I want to tell you, often we don't know what the whys of life. That's the first question you ask when you're sick. That's the first question when you, you ask God when you come across a difficult situation. Well, why? Or well, why? God never answers the why. The question that you should be talking about is who? Who's in charge here? Who reigns over all? Who's over my life? Who's here to be my strength and my hope? Who? It's the Lord. That's the question. The question is never why. The question is always who? The Lord, my healer. He may allow us to be sick for a, a purpose to help us to grow or be strengthened or bring us into a better place, but he is the Lord, our healer. And every time you get down on your knees and you're praying for healing, then all you have to do is hold on and trust and believe because he is not leaving you. He's not leaving you out there. He is going to come and he's going to answer that prayer. Persevere in prayer to the Lord my healer for he will bring healing in his time, in his way to your body and or to your mind. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. How many of you have experienced that before? Amen. Amen. Three people. Oh, okay. This is more good. The Lord our provider. Are you facing a circumstance that is too big for you? And you're, you're looking, you're just looking, you're, you're trying the best you can to figure out how to get out of this problem, and you just don't have an answer. How many of you have been in that place before? Yeah. Yeah. I want to tell you, when you seek the Lord, He will lift you up like that. In His time, in His way. You may think that it should happen today. You may want it to happen for tomorrow. But I want to tell you, if there ever is a delay, know this. God is just developing your relationship with Him. You see, trust is the very foundation of relationship. You cannot have a solid relationship with anyone, let alone the Almighty God, unless you trust them. Mm. And God brings us into difficult places so that we can pray and seek Him. And when we pray and seek Him, He brings the answer in His time and in His way. And when you come out of that problem, and you see the hand of God at work, I'll tell you what happens. Your trust level goes up. Amen. And your relationship with God grows. Amen. How many of you want your relationship Amen. with God to grow? Amen. All right, be ready for some trouble coming your way. <laughs> God uses trouble. And I mean that. He really does. But He only does it so that you and I can know. Come to know. And that's what he did with the children of Israel. Don't you see it? In, the, in those 40 years of traveling, you know, they would they'd be without water and they're complaining and they're whining. Oh, I don't have enough water. I don't have enough to eat. I bought this man. I bought a few uh, bit of, of meat. A little bit of meat. And God sent quail. 
Is there a way? How many like quail? Mm -hmm. Bob, if you wanted to be, God gave it to you. You didn't say what kind. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, every time they came to another problem, they forgot about all the deliverances that had come before. Yeah. They just forgot. They just didn't see it. When you look back, look back, and what you'll see is a pattern of God bringing you to a better place in life. Amen. That's what you'll see. That's what David said. He said when he, when he looked back, when he came to just before his death, he said, I looked back and recognized that God's hand was at work in every direction he brought me. See, God is ready to answer your prayer. He's the Lord your provider. He's the Lord your banner. When fighting through the battles of life, we're encouraged in our prayer that the Lord is our banner. He's our protector. He's the one through whom we will find victory. And that victory will be certain. Hallowed be his name. The Lord our shepherd, the one who cares for me, the one who shoulders my burdens, the one who carries me when I can no longer walk. You see, God is there, and you have to go back. There's a reason why these names of, of God are there, so that you can think on it and remember who he is and how faithful he is, and you can see him demonstrate himself in those areas of your life. That's the purpose. God shows to you who he is so that you might know and trust him. That is found in the place of prayer. And you take hold of these names and you take them and you use them when you're in those places of temptation and hardship and sickness and fear. You bring them into pass. Wait a minute. That's who the Lord is. Go into Psalms. Read Psalms. What you'll see in Psalms is David cries out. He repeatedly speaks to himself and rehearses in his mind who God is and how he's faithful and what he's done in the past. And he will do it again. And he speaks those words of faith. He's speaking to himself. How do you speak to yourself? <laughs> well, if you haven't tried it, we won't send the people in the white coats over. We want you to encourage. And that's what, that's what the scripture says. In a very dark place in his life, the scripture says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. Yeah. He remembered who he is. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what happened? He found the victory. Yes, he did. Do my prayers reflect a willingness to submit myself to God? Look at verse 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In all prayer, there is a place for submission. Let me say that again. In prayer, there is always a place for submission to be found. Whose will will be done? God's or yours? Whose will will be done? Is one of the issues that is in view in the time of prayer. For often, when we begin to pray about a particular situation, we pray that God will bring us into a certain direction. And sometimes weeks will go by, and even months, and we, we begin to pray differently. You, you know, you, at first you think you know what direction that you, you want God to send you down. Really? How about if you said, Lord, I'm thinking this might be in the direction, but I'm probably wrong. <laughs> so why don't you send me down the direction that you think? And you see, many times we're not willing, we, we kind of want to hold on to our life as if we could go down where we want to go down. You see, but God isn't ready to do that, because he loves you. And he's watching over your life. And he has a better plan. How many of you think, well, after a few years, that God has a little bit better plan for your life than you have? Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. How many times have you prayed for the wrong thing and then got it and 
and realize, hmm. Hmm. what am I doing? Hmm. Right? Well, God, God wants us to come to Him, being willing to submit ourselves to His will. You see, sometimes when we pray, prayer changes us. God, we, we're in our time of prayer and we're asking God, uh, you know, to help us and give us direction. And, and you know what happens? Sometimes God speaks direction into our life. And it's Him. And He shows you it's Him. And your prayer is actually a vehicle that God is using to help change you and send you down a better road. It's part of the process that God uses to fabricate His will in us. And that's why it's so important for you to pray consistently and pray, Lord, Your will be done. And isn't that what Jesus said in Matthew? Just before He went to the cross, He fell on His face and prayed, Oh, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from Me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you. Yeah. Wasn't that the, the prayer of Shadrach? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? I'm going to tell you, those were men of faith. Those young men were men of faith. They didn't even blink. They didn't even blink at the threat of the king who had their lives in his hand. But they said, our God, who, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the bur burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your king, from your hand, O king. But if not, we will only serve him. Amen. I want to tell you, that's a powerful prayer. That's a prayer. He says, well, I believe God's going to deliver me out of the situations that I'm in in life. But if not, I'm still going to serve Because the direction that will take me will be the direction that is best for me. And you say, well, how do you know that? How do you know that? Well, because I'm a father, and I have two sons. And I want to tell you, I would never, never even consider for a minute to send my son down the wrong direction. And I am so imper imperfect mm. as a father. But my Heavenly Father would only ever send me down the path, as hard as it may be, for my own benefit. Have you been there? Yes. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about here? And that's the prayer. That's the prayer that touches God's heart. That's the prayer that moves heaven. When you get down and you say, well, Lord, I don't know where you're taking me, and I'm not sure I'm liking it, but I will tell you, whatever it is, I know you'll deliver me in the end. And it may be the way I, I'm thinking, and it may not. But I am going to trust you. I want to tell you, that's, that's the prayer. That moves. That, that moves him. That moves the hand of God. And that's what God wants of us. He wants us to pray with boldness, but with submission. Prayer is not demanding of God, nor only being willing to accept the answer that we want. Prayer is the process of unburdening your heart to God about your struggles and letting the Spirit of God work in you as you submit to His will. Submission is aligning ourselves with our Father. Not as I will, but as you will. In Jesus' name. Now I want to tell you, if we're asking for the wrong things, or asking for the wrong time, or asking for the wrong reason, God will answer in all the right ways. Did you hear that? God's ready to do that. You say, in Jesus' name, I submit myself, Lord, to your purpose and your plan in Jesus' name. I'm going to tell you all the wrong things will be moved aside that you ask for. And the right things will come your way. Five. 
Are my prayers focused on my needs or my wants? Give us to say our daily bread. Our daily bread is representative of our daily needs. In Matthew 6, 31 and 32, we read, Do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. So when you pray for a new job, you can have confidence that God will provide the right job. All you have to do is keep coming before Him and praying and doing your part by going out and actively seeking an appropriate position. So He's saying good to that. Mm -hmm. I think it takes little faith at all. God promised that. Was He a liar? God's not a liar. Is He an Indian giver? Does He give you a promise to make your way off? No. no. That's not God at all. So you can know. He said that he would meet your needs. Don't worry saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. And so you can pray with all confidence for adequate uh, provision in your household. You can pray with all confidence for physical health and strength to be able to fulfill your responsibilities and your emotional health. God can bring that sense of peace and joy in every situation, and he will. It will come to pass as you pray. Your spiritual health, the salvation of your loved ones, your children, your unsaved spouses, God will meet your needs in Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen. Amen. He will. That's who he is. He doesn't have to try to be that way. He is that way. Amen. He has said that he will meet our needs. And if God is not a man, they should not. Amen? Amen. Are my prayers repentant and humble? Verse 12 says, And forgive us our debts as we forget our debtors. When I come before God in prayer, my awareness of my sin should be expanding. And my awareness of others' offenses should be minimizing. Did you hear that? You know, when you come before God, I would say when I come before God, I am reminded of all the things that I do wrong. And I confess them. But I should never be on my knees in prayer remembering all the wrongs of others. God doesn't call me to be a judge over others. God calls you and I to look inwardly at our own self. And the time of prayer is a time when God begins to speak to us in our lives and points out certain areas that he wants you to work on. And prayer changes us. Look at Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, then leave your gift. And first be reconciled to your brother. And then come and offer your gift. That says, get it right. Maybe some of your prayers aren't being answered because you're, you're not looking to get it right. God's speaking to you about uh, changing in a certain area of your life, and you're just in, ignoring that. God says, hey. And he does that because he cares. Lastly, my prayers are, should be prayers of expectation. Verse 13, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Would you say that in heaven things pretty much happen the way God wants? Did you ever think about that? I mean, you think heaven is a place where it mostly goes his way? <laughs> then why would you think it's different here? Why? Do you see how, we, do you see how er erroneous our thinking is? God's will will be done. And we shouldn't think 
think differently. It will be done here on earth. And so your prayer should be a prayer that is filled with faith and expectation for yours. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Forever. So I want to ask you to ask yourself this question. What does my Heavenly Father want to accomplish in my prayer life? from this message. You see, we don't come to church to hear words that tickle our ears. We come to God's house to hear what He has to say so we can change our life. That's what I mean. I want to tell you, there is an opportunity for your life to go in fifth gear hmm. down the right direction when you're praying and you're seeking him. Now, I want to tell you that I'm a, I'm a big fan of being able to pray in a manner that is effective. See, I don't want to pray just mindlessly or whatever comes to my mind. When I go to pray, I want to pray with purpose. I want to pray prayers that can change my life. And I'm going to tell you right now, praying for personal growth. If you pray this from your heart, I am telling you, your life is going to change. You are going to change. Lord, grant me Grace. Everything comes to us by way of grace. You know that. Amen. Amen. That I might prepare my heart to earnestly, diligently, and consistently see. Now, I would tell you that many in the church don't have a consistent prayer life. They just don't. And so this is a prayer that if you don't have that in place in your life, you need to pray. Now, I, I mentioned to you, and I, I'm sorry if it's repetitious. I'm old. I have the right to be repetitious. <laughs> Here's what it is. That you and I, if we struggle to get up and pray, you pray about that. God, I'm struggling to get up. I want to get up. I know I need to. But it, it, it is so hard for me to do that. I just can't seem to do that. Can you help me achieve that goal so that I can get time with you for a moment? <coughs> no, maybe it's night that you can do that. Maybe it's afternoon. But the idea is to do it consistently. So I always struggled to get up early. And I knew that that was the only time that I would have to be able to pray effectively. And so, I began to pray about that. I said, Lord, I can't get up. I, it seems like I struggle every time to get up early. Will you help me do that? And I kept praying. I want to tell you, about two and a half, three weeks later, I set the alarm at 5.15, and I wake up at 5.14. <laughs> and... So I was able to turn the alarm off so my wife didn't get disturbed. And I was able to go downstairs and do that. And then the next day, I woke up at 5.13. Hmm. And I started to wake up. And sometimes I wake up before 4.30. And, I, and, and it, like, I, I was waking up on my own. And it came to the place where I never even said it. I never even said it. I just said, Lord, when you want me up, wake me. Why? Because he wants you to come join him. And so when you're praying these prayers, these are prayers that he has for your life. This is what he wants. You're asking him the very purpose of his will. So I want to ask you, begin to pray these prayers. Now, don't just do it mindlessly. And you don't have to do all of them at once. 
If you focus on one a day, great. Your life will change because these are prayers God wants to bring to pass in your life. Amen. How many of you believe God answers prayer? Amen. Amen. Amen.